What's up, people? Today, we're going to learn how to program an area blast. And I'm not talking about a bodily function, if you know what I mean. So an area blast is when you're playing a shooting game and you hit your target and you want to do damage to more than just that target, but within a certain radius around that target. There's a couple of ways you use an area blast. One would be if you were projecting an explosive projectile, like a grenade as opposed to a bullet, where a grenade would do damage to a certain area. The other way you would use this if your target was explosive, like an oil refinery or an oil truck, and when you hit it, it exploded. All right, so here I have a little program. In the program, I have a gun that we're going to control with the arrow keys, a bullet that will be shot from the gun. I have two kinds of enemies. The red indicate a normal enemy that will just uh, disappear or be eliminated when hit by a bullet. And the oil tanker, which not only will be eliminated, but will cause an explosion and eliminate everything within a certain radius. So let's look at this in action. So when I hit a red enemy, it will just be eliminated. When I hit the black enemy, the oil tanker, there's an explosion and everything within a certain radius of this black or oil tanker enemy will be eliminated. The size and duration of the explosion is determined by the parameters we enter into our more block and we'll look into that more as we program. All right, so let's do it. Let's get this thing programmed. So to program the area blast, we're going to be using the pen tool and we're going to be creating a more block. And this more block will take in two parameters. One will determine the size of the area and the second will determine how long the blast lasts for. All right guys, so this is not a full blown start to finish tutorial. I'm just showing you how to create the area blast so you can incorporate it into one of your projects. So the first thing I did here is open up a project that called it Area Blast and I created a first sprite. And just for this example, I made it a circle or a dot. You can draw your own or get the circle from the library either way. And then I programmed it simply to create a clone of itself every second. Once the clone is created, it will go to some random place on the screen, float around for a minute, and then disappear. So freeze the video at this point, create this sprite, copy this code, and I'll see you when you're done. Okay, so now we have our enemy sprite and we can just, if we hit the flag, you should see every second one pops up and we'll never have more than 60 but of course we want to eliminate them eventually okay so I'm stopping that now I'm going to create my next sprite which is going to be the oil tanker or it could be the grenade or an oil refinery or dynamite something that's going to explode and create the need for the area blast I'm going to draw the sprite I'm going to use a circle as well so click on the paintbrush for new sprite I'm going to use the circle tool make this guy black and just make it a circle all right go to scripts so let's create the more block the area blast will be a more block so we're going to create a function more block the more block is going to be called area blast and it's going to take in two parameters one is going to be the size of the area blast in pixels or steps and the other will be time in which it lasts. All right, so the first thing we do is more block. We're going to make a block and we're going to call it area blast. It's going to take in two parameters and they're both going to be numbers. So the first one is going to be called size and the second one is going to be called time. 
Okay, we're going to define the function or the area blast. And what we're going to do is use the pen tool to get this done. So the first thing we're going to do is set the size of our pen. So go to your pen section and we're going to set the size. So set size, but we're not going to set the size to one. We're going to set the size to the inputted size based on the parameter. Then we're going to set the color. Now you could of course set the color to anything you want. I'm going to use this gray background here. So I click the indicator, pick on gray. The next thing we're going to do is put the pen down. And we want that pen to stay down for as long as we want our blast to last. So we're going to go to control and grab a wait block. We're not going to wait for one second. We're going to wait for whatever time was entered by the programmer. At which point we're going to take our pen up. Back to pen. Pen up. And then we're going to clear our screen. So let's make sure this works as we want it to work. So I'm going to go to my events and I'm going to say whenever we click on this, whenever this sprite is clicked, let's see the area blast. So I'm going to go to more blocks, get the area blast. Now we'll say the area will be 100 wide and it'll last for one second. So if I click on it, okay. So what if I make it 200? I click on it, good. And what if I make it for half a second? It's quicker, perfect. So it works well. So now that we created the object that's going to explode and cause the area blast, we need to communicate that to the things that will be destroyed. Now here's how it works. We need, we're, we're creating the blast, but in, in order for that blast to actually have any effect on any other sprites, we have to program that as well. And here is while the color is extremely important because we have to match the color exactly. So if we go back to the enemies that we want to destroy, we're going to create another script. And what we're going to do is create a listener. And this enemy will go about its business, but if it happens to get caught up in one of these area blasts, we want it to be eliminated. I'm going to once again go to Control. And when this starts as a clone, we want it to always be listening. So if we want something to always happen, it's forever. We want it to listen for something. So we're going to listen for the touching of that color. So under sensing, if touching, and here's where the color is extremely important. We have to pick the exact same color that we did for our tanker, which was that, this background color here. So I'm going to match that color perfectly. And now what do I want to happen? So when it gets caught in the blast, I want it to be eliminated. And I can make it do a whole bunch of things. For So in this case, I'm just going to have it delete itself. So I go to Control and delete the clone. So now, if I hit the flag... You see anything. Okay. Now I could go and animate this. So if you look at my costumes, you can see I have one, two, five costumes in total. So I can simply say, all right, you know what? When it's at, when it starts as a clone, we want it to go to costume one, always, until it gets hit. And then what we want to do is repeat four times. Control. We want to repeat four times. And what do we want to happen four times? We want it to go to the next costume. On the looks. Next costume. 
and we'll slow it down just a little bit so we could actually get some animation let's go point one and now if we look at our program you'll see they're destroyed with animation so there you go the area blast fully programmed you can incorporate this in any project that you've already created or in any future projects you plan to create do not hesitate to shoot me a comment if you have a question I will keep a link below both to this project as well as the project I showed you at the very beginning of this video with the gun so there you go guys the area blast down below you will see links to both projects that I showed you earlier on in the video. If you have any questions or how to incorporate them into your projects, don't hesitate to shoot me a comment. I'll get back to you. And as always, like what you like, subscribe if you haven't, and we'll see you next time.